And that's beautiful. So let's go ahead and go further. How does the Bible define love? So in 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 8, we're given a definition. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Whoa, did not expect to get that emotional. So, um, yeah, as you can tell, I'm just passionate because we see a lot of hurting people in the world, you know? And um, the last few years, it struck a little too close to home for me. Um, And so I think that love is the answer. And I think that if we can tap into that spirit of love, we're going to we're going to do a lot of good things. And so, like I said, love is patient. It's kind. I think also I tear up because I'm human, too. And I know I fall short of this. And I know that I've hurt people that I didn't mean to hurt myself friends, best friends, and um, just want to be better, you know, at the end of the day. So that's our definition of, of love. It never, it never ends, and to finish off the, the scripture, as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. But love will endure forever. Um, moving on to the next concept. All will fall short, and that's kind of what what I'm alluding to and, and what these emotions are, are for, is we're all going to fall short of that. But try your best to discipline yourself and get self-control. That is why we need grace, not works. We are told what to do when we fall short. Go to God, who has already forgiven us. And so to go deeper into scripture of us on the concept of we've all fallen short. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 7.15-20 All will fall short. Sin dwells inside of us. Cannot escape it fully. For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. This is Apostle Paul. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it's no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. Whoa, I was not expecting this, but I got to keep it. To be honest, um, the reason this this hits uh, so much with me is it resonates with me, right? I feel bad when I fall short, and so it's like, what is that conscience? What is that that we're judging ourselves? What is that that we feel guilty, feel shame? Whether you believe in in a god or not, when you do someone wrong, anyone that's not a psychopath feels bad about it eventually. And I guess I feel so tearful because of that, but also. You know, this is one of the biggest reasons that, that people fall out of having a relationship with God. And a lot of re- people get addicted to, to substances or other unhealthy habits, toxic habits. Is they don't feel worthy and they don't feel love. And so they succumb to the anger and the bitterness and the resentment. And life's pain and suffering. And I've heard this from friends. I've heard this from peers. I've heard this from my own parents. 
and it's a it's a dark hole addictions and strongholds and bondages and suicidal ideations it's because you don't feel loved and you judge yourself too much when the fact of the matter is we all fall short of God's perfection but he gives us grace that we don't deserve but we don't have to earn it either he just gives it to us and that's what I'm going to go into next is we are saved by grace, not works, that an all-powerful transcendent spirit called love is given to us freely to sustain us against life's tragedies and pain and suffering. And we see that in Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, that, so that no one may boast. Then we're told that when we fall short, right? So we're all going to fall short, and that's why we're given God's infinite grace and love. But when we do fall short, we're called to confess and give it to God. And so that makes sense from a neuroscientific standpoint. We are nervous systems. Our nervous systems and our brains are finite information processing machines. And so to create space within that, you have to have some cathartic experience. And so that's what the ritual and the worship and the sacraments, that's one element of why we do that. And so in Psalm 51, 10 through 12, King David says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. And so when you fall short and it's inevitable, God already knows. You just got to confess it to him. Confess it to your other fellow followers. Be seen. Be heard. Don't hold it in. No one's perfect. That's okay. Just give it up to him. And ask for discernment of why that happened. What what deep roots, what deep seeds have taken root inside of my, my mind, body, soul, and spirit. To make me act a certain way that I don't want to act. And then once you shine a light on that and you pluck those roots out, you pluck those bad seeds out, renew me, fill that space with your love and your grace and your forgiveness, transcendent spirit. Do that for me, please. That's what we're called to do when we mess up. And then in 1 John 1, 9, 10, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his world is not in us. And so that, again, we need to confess when we fall short and then invite the loving spirit back into us. And we don't condemn. We don't condemn people. We love people. We see them. We give them compassion, not condemnation, because we all sin and we all wrestle. And so your sin's not greater than my sin. It's sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. 